Are you abusing your dog? After watching this video, you might be surprised at the answer. Hello everyone, my name's Chris. Welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to talk about, are you abusing your dog? So it's important to understand that Dogs are designed to live in a black and white world. So for example, when dogs are around other dogs or they're in a pack, they communicate perfectly to each other. Because they don't reason and they don't run off of emotions, there's no area where that they can miscommunicate. So if a dog is designed to live in a black and white world and we don't know how to communicate to our dog in a way that they understand and respect, and we're not consistent and we reason and we run off of emotion, then we're more apt to create what's called a gray world. It's a world where our dog is a little unsure of what is acceptable behavior and what isn't in different situations. If our goal is to be the leader that we need to be for our specific dog, then we need to do everything we can to make sure that we create a black and white world for them. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. So there's three ways that you can abuse your dog. There's the physical slash verbal aspect when it comes down to the negative of each one. And then you have the mental aspect, and then you have feeding. So to start off with, one of the ways that, that we miscommunicate through the physical and verbal aspect is verbal communication and physical communication when we're talking about a correction or negative. Each dog is going to have its own level. It's going to be specific to them because ideally when we correct a dog, we want to find that level of correction that's just enough they want to avoid, whether it's a verbal or a physical. And if we go above and beyond that, and it's too much, or we let our emotions get away with, or get away from us, and we correct our dog out of emotion, or we just correct them too hard because we think they're a bigger dog and they need a harder correction, then what ends up happening is we send our dog into panic. And a dog in panic can't think, and at the same time, it puts them into flight or, or, or it can even turn them into defense mode. But in that moment, what we're doing is we're creating a great environment because our dog is feeling unsafe. Now I would say probably the most important one is the mental aspect. So an example would be this. Say that you get home one day and your dog runs up to you and your pet knit and everything is great, but then you see that your dog is pottied over there on the floor. And so in that moment, you immediately change your voice, you pottied and you maybe grab your dog's collar and you drag him over there. Some people will rub their nose in it. Don't do that. But the dog, because they're an in-the-moment animal, think that they're actually being corrected for coming to you in the first place. They don't know that they're being corrected for something that they did a while ago because they're an in-the-moment animal. So you end up creating a distrust in the dog in that moment. Now, where people go wrong in that is when they get home the next day, and this is where, again, we allow our human thought and reasoning to, to cause a problem in this, is that when we get home the next day or the next couple of days and the dog is real standoffish and we aren't quite sure why. And so we invite the dog into us. We try to show them that it's okay and that it's safe to come to us. And we start loving on our dog again. But then later on, or maybe we look over in a different spot and we see that they've potted. So now we correct them again and they went, aha, I was right. I can't trust you. But in your mind, you're sitting there thinking, oh, you were standoffish, so you knew you did something wrong, and that's why you didn't want to come to me because you didn't want to get punished for it. So it's a, it's a vicious circle when we try to put our own human thought and reasoning into things, which is why it's so important to understand how your dog works. So another way you may be abusing your dog without realizing it is through feeding. Dogs are designed to have a natural body weight which means that they're gonna be slightly on the lean side. The reason why that's important is because a dog's organs are only designed to filter out toxins for a natural body weight, which means that if your dog is overweight, there are toxins that are constantly running around in the system, and over time, that's where you start to end up having cancer and arthritis and fatty tumors and skin issues and ear issues and eye issues, all kinds of different problems. So if we wanna provide the best home for our dog and we wanna be the leader that we need to be for our dog, then we need to also feed them correctly and make sure that we're not slowly poisoning them over time because they're overweight. Now, the biggest cause of all of this when it comes down to abusing a dog, we don't do it on purpose, but what it comes down to is it comes down to a lack of education, a lack of knowledge of how to properly communicate to our dog and how dogs work 
It's why my first videos are the basis of how dogs work is because if you don't understand your dog and you don't understand what they need you to be specifically for them, then you're behind the curve when it comes down to being the leader that you need to be for your specific dog. So one of the best ways to fix it is get educated. Whether it's checking out our webpage and watching some more videos or on the YouTube channel, um, our website is AAADogTraining.com. It's T-R-I-P-L-E, is the, it's spelled out. Now if you have questions, my contact information is on there and so you can call me and we can talk about your specific dog and situation. But until then, the very best way to avoid abusing your dog is, and I tell all of my clients this, if you question whether or not you should correct your dog, don't do it. Whether it's a verbal correction or a physical correction. And the reason why is because it's better to be wrong and not correct your dog than to correct your dog and be wrong. If you should have corrected your dog and you didn't, your dog just got away with something. But if you correct your dog when you shouldn't, you're driving a wedge in your relationship. You're creating that gray world where now they can't trust you. And that causes problems in other areas as well. And the last thing you wanna do is put stress on your dog. So um, I highly recommend if you haven't seen some of the other videos that you watch them. If you have questions or wanna make comments, feel free to do that down below. Also. If you have an idea for a video you may wanna see, leave a comment and it just may become a video. So my ultimate goal is to give the knowledge that I have to you guys so you can become that leader you need to be for your dog. If you like this video also, please hit like and subscribe. And then always remember, dogs are meant to be a blessing to the family. So gain control and invite them into all aspects of your life. Thanks and have a great day.